say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome. To the farmer's kitchen. We're the farmers. This is our kitchen. Look at the bounty in front of us. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? I just decorated with it because it's so pretty. It is. It just looks pretty sitting out there. Yes. You know, you remember back in the old days when people had fruit and stuff mm -hmm. made out of plastic? Oh, yeah. And sometimes wood. That's right. Do you remember that? My mom had some. And some even glass. Yeah, that's true. But this is real. That's right. Because we don't eat stuff with glass in it usually. <laughs> so here we are with all this bounty in front of us. What are we going to do with it? It's that time of year to store to make snacks. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. never ending the possibilities that you have. Now, if you look right here, you will see some pickled stuff. This, I used to get in the store. Now, you might not like cauliflower, but I bet you might like this mm -hmm. one. Carrots and celery. Giardinera Ooh, is how good. you would say That's it if right. you're Italian. How do you Remember, say you say Giardinera. That's it's Giardinera. Giardinera is what I by like. By golly, Giardinera. in Kentucky, it's Giardinera. It's an it's Giardinera. That's right. <laughs> so by golly, there it is, and it's delicious. Now, you can make that as hot or as mild as you want. Now, everybody likes pickles, mm -hmm. but let's talk about canning, hot bathing, or there's this possibility, too. There's refrigerator jelly, and there's refrigerator... Pickles. Pickles. I like this better. What does that mean? Easy. You don't have to take it and can it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pressure cook it. You don't even have to hot bath it. In this method that we're using today, and we'll show you this in great detail later, the vinegar and the salt and the sugar is the preservative that will keep it for three months. Now, how long do you want to keep a jar of pickles in your refrigerator they anyway? Last, they don't last a week with you. They don't last a week. The bad thing about these are you're supposed to wait for five days. There's no way I can wait for five no. days when I have fresh pickles. So we're going to pull one of these out. Dry one early. Now look at that. It looks delicious. Now, what is different about this? It's still, you can tell it's still got. And it's supposed to wait crunch. five wet days to two weeks, right? That's already good. That's just 24 hours. That's delicious already. Oh my. Wow. I'm excited and crunchy. You're gonna have to hide that for me. That's why they stay so crunchy, I think, isn't it? Delicious. Listen to that crunch. Delish. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> So why would you do refrigerator pickles instead of pressure cooked pickles that can keep for three years? Why would you? Crunch. Because I thought the crunch was great. The crunch. So if you pressure cook them, they're not as, they're softer. They can get softer. That is wonderful. Oh, so that is a refrigerator pickle. Again, a couple months in the refrigerator is all you need. This, Jardinera. Try that too. By golly. <laughs> I'm gonna Let's try open it. that up. Let's take a look at that. This is an Italian deal. You can make it sweet or you can make it salty. We put a little bit of salt and a little bit of sweetness and some turmeric. Oh my. Oh wow. Right off the bat. I'm in love. I like that too. And they're so easy. So easy to make. Mm. 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 You think about how many practices are still left over from the 30s and the 40s from our parents and grandparents who still think about the old ways. And you know, when it comes to pork and things like that, you always are thinking about, oh, you've got to put pink salt in it, they yeah. called it, nitrates, nitrites. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Think about this, if you're going to make a sausage, what we had that came around in the 40s and 50s were deep freezes mm -hmm. in your home. Right. The pink salt was to cure that meat for long, long periods of time. Right. It's not good for you. So how can you do that? You put it in the deep freeze. So we think a little bit differently, but a lot of those old ways, a lot of people still put sodium nitrate in their pork and different things, and they don't need it if you're yeah. gonna freeze it. And that's what we're gonna do. What do you want to use if you're making spaghetti, lasagna, or assorted 
dishes. What kind of meat do you want to use? Sausage, of course. What type of sausage? I like the sweet. Sweet Italian sausage. Yeah. When we make this ourselves, sometimes we'll make a great big batch, mm -hmm. we'll put it in the freezer, and we will use it for just such recipes. Right. Today we're going to show you how we make that. This is not going to go back in the freezer because it's going to go in a wonderful dish. Cabbage is coming on, mm -hmm. lots of cabbage. There's so many things you can do with cabbage. Right. You have seen us do glumkies, mm -hmm. which is a, a northern thing. Right. You have seen us do cabbage rolls, but these are going to be sweet Italian sausage cabbage rolls. That's a lot of words, but yes, it, it sums it up in a marinara sauce with Yummy. some tomatoes. So what do you have to do to get this thing started? Well, we need to get the cabbage going first. We want to okay. boil the cabbage, because if we were just to use these leaves, it, they wouldn't fold good, they'd crunch. So I'm going to just boil them for a little bit. And it starts the cooking yeah. process. So which one you want to use? want to use this. We have two beautiful that's cabbage. That's a pretty cabbage. That's pretty. And what I like to do is I like to cut kind of the core out a little bit, so that way as it's boiling, it makes it easier to pull these leaves off, because I just want these leaves. You know what? If you can't grow your own garden, you might want to check into a CSA. Are there so many, so many good farmers markets around? Oh, yeah. We got this in Smithfield. There's so many, so many farmers markets around. It's people growing local stuff. It's just wonderful. Before I put the water, I wanted to do this because if I put the water in first, you know me, I'd end up, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm gonna put water in this, and we're gonna boil these. All right. I'm gonna just kind of turn this around as these boil. We'll kind of let them pull them off. Just let them get cooked a little bit, and we're gonna pull them off. Put them right there. Let's go ahead and mix up our pork. So we've got two pounds here. Okay. Now we raised our own pig. If you can't raise your own pig, you can find ground pork just about anywhere. Right. But many, many of the Italian dishes that we do, we'll use beef sometimes, but if we have pork, I really do, I really do like some pork. I do too. All right, the ingredients you're gonna need here are obviously pork, fennel seed, dry oregano, dry basil, kosher salt, sugar, fresh pepper, parsley, some white wine, a little bit of nutmeg. All right, now one thing about this recipe, the thing to me that makes the sausage, the Italian sausage, is the fennel. So we're gonna start with two pounds. We're gonna use about a tablespoon, maybe even a little more. This really makes... A little bit heavy. Oh yeah, this All is right. absolutely wonderful. Then we're gonna use a tablespoon of oregano, and then a tablespoon of sweet basil. In fact, you know what, let's go, let's go one and a half on the basil. That helps get the sweet there. And parsley, let's do a tablespoon of parsley. Now let's come in with a tablespoon of kosher salt. We're gonna use a tablespoon, and this is raw sugar, turbinado sugar. Now, it's sugar, it's less processed, but it's still sugar, so if you're watching out for your sugar, just remember that. Then we're gonna use a half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Let's go a little bit more on that. And we're gonna use about a quarter cup of chilled white wine, a sweet white wine, and just a dash of nutmeg. All right, ready? You're digging in? Right, I'm digging in. It smells good, doesn't it? Mm-mm-mm. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a little onion powder, garlic powder. I like it just as is, though. I really like the fennel and the basil to stand out. And then oregano. Yummy. Let me see what we got there. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Now if you want to freshen this up just a little bit, we're gonna do one more thing here. We're gonna put some basil pesto in there. Now homemade basil pesto, you've seen us do this on the show before, generally is just fresh basil. You can put some rosemary in there, garlic, olive oil, maybe Delicious. some pine nuts, maybe a little bit of cheese. So let's do that. Let's Start put just a little you. basil pesto. Oh, that smells so good. That smells good. That basil pesto added a little to it. So that has just kind of come up to a boil, just enough to where they come off yeah. easily. And oh. I just kind of move them around, so that I just want to warm them up so they're softer for me. Cabbage is so delicious and so good for yes, you. it is. And so versatile. So remember, ground pork and those simple recipes, and you can have some nice Italian sausage. Now, if you wanted to, you could take that very thing that I did right there, you could run it through some casings and make you some brats. And I mean, Yummy. they would be nice and tasty. And you've seen us made brats on the show. If you want to take a look, here's us actually filling some casings to make some brats. I think we made venison brats out of this. All you got to do is have a little meat processor and hook yourself up and put those in the freezer and you're good to go. 
Now, huge. depending on the size of your cabbage, this cabbage was a, was a honker. Yes. Now, there's just two of us. So, what we got going here so far is we're going to make a, a sweet marinara here. It's not going to be real sweet, but you want to break that acid up just a little bit. I'm going to put a large clove of garlic in here. I'll just press that in there. That's four cups of tomatoes and six ounces of tomato paste. And Nikki is cutting up How much onion a you small want? onion. Let's go ahead and put that in there. A little more? Like a, a little, little more. more here. As much onion as you want. If you like a lot of onion, I would recommend a sweet yellow onion in this. I like the sweet yellow onions. Now, I have never measured this, so I'm going to have to. I usually do it by smell and taste. Mm -hmm. So I am going to estimate. I'm going to put a lot of basil in there. I'm going to say, right. I'm going to say close to two, two tablespoons. Yeah. Load it up. I love it. Oh, it smells so good. Then some oregano. I'll probably come back with at least a tablespoon of that. Yeah, I really want this flavors to pop here. So I've got the garlic and the onion. You know, we've got some basil pesto too. You can't get enough of that basil pesto because you've got fresh basil. Mm -hmm. You've got a little bit of rosemary. Do you want some basil pesto? Yes, please. Now think about this as an Italian dish oh, where you much? don't, yes. Perfect. That's about a tablespoon of that. Eating, maybe. So to cut the acid, I'm going to use just a little bit of sugar. I'm going to add just a little bit of red wine, a little bit more olive oil. Yummy. So we're ready. Can I go ahead and start making them? You can. This is a quarter cup of rice. Did you, and I'd use brown rice. You can use brown or white. And that just adds a little extra. Yeah, you don't have to use it, but it kind of gives it a little more texture. And you can make these as big or little as you want. And we're making, what do you think, that a big hunk? I'd say as big as you want it. All right. Because there's just two of us, so you figure how many you're going to eat. Yes. But the bigger they are. I just fold them up. Look, look at that. Yummy. This is beautiful. It is beautiful. Just one more for this layer. Yeah. All right, you're going to sauce it up, and I'll make you some more. So we're just going to layer this. Now, as this cooks, this is all going to start running together. And getting yummy, and your house is going to smell really, really mm -hmm. good. All right. Okay. Let me do a whole nother row. So that's ten. Because mm -hmm. they're big. That's a that's a, that's enough for me. What are you going to? Oh eat? yeah, that's there. I'll just watch you eat. <laughs> and you can use fresh tomatoes if you want, but I have I have ideas for those tomatoes, and that's along with scrambled eggs. Oh yeah. Fresh scrambled eggs yeah. in the morning or omelets. Oh, ooh, ooh. look at that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Now, if you wanted to put just a little more basil on the top, I think you will. Yeah, I love my basil. Season. Just love my basil. I wish you could smell this. Oh. Magic. And eight hours on low. Yes. Or you could do four hours on high, but I think it's better on low. I do. I think it's better when it does the slow simmer. All right. All right. Let's get it cooking. Now, a lot of people love sweet pickles. A lot of people love dill pickles. I don't know that we've done a dill pickle show. And there's so many recipes out there. This is a simple solution. Now, it does have some sugar, but remember, you're not drinking the solution. Right. You're eating the pickle. It just flavors it. And right. trust me, to balance out the salt, you want a little sugar in there. Here's one thing that's really good. When we make a jar of pickles, there's no dyes mm -hmm. or chemicals in it. This is straight good stuff, fresh stuff and they have a fresh, good taste. It's, oh, yeah. it's hard to explain. So we're gonna make a little bigger batch because we've got some asparagus over. You can do the same thing with asparagus. Yummy. Now the only thing I'm gonna do different with the asparagus is put just a few more red pepper flakes in than I normally would to make okay. it a little bit so spicy. So I won't eat it so you can so, eat it yourself. That's exactly. Right. All right, so what we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna need a cup and a quarter of water. This is your mixture per jar. Now we're making a little bit extra because we wanna cover this asparagus up. We're gonna do a cup and three quarters of distilled white vinegar. Now, some people use apple cider. I like the clear white vinegar. Ready? We're gonna use three teaspoons of kosher salt. You do not want to use regular table salt here because it can turn it funny colors. Yeah. And it's just, there's caking, anti-caking agents in that. So when you use kosher salt, you can use pickling salt as well. All right, we're gonna do two and a half tablespoons of sugar. So that's our liquid part. We're going to bring that to a boil until your sugar dissolves. Now we don't want to cook these pickles. The whole point of these crispy pickles is the fact that we're going to let this, after it boils, we're going to let it get down to room temperature right. before we put them in a jar. We just want this to dissolve. Just much. want that to dissolve. You want your sugar and your salt to dissolve. So that's a very basic solution. 
your flavor, you're gonna see where that comes from in a minute. That looks good. So we're just about there. All right, so let's turn that off. Everything's dissolved in That's there. That's all we want. Set it so up. now where's the taste come from? Fresh dill. Look at this. We're gonna take several sprigs of fresh dill. That's another one, drop it in the fridge. We're gonna drop that in the bottom. Now this is a very simple, very simple recipe. These flavors, when you have your vinegar, when it's combined with the dill mm -hmm. and the fresh garlic and the mustard seed, let's do about a teaspoon of that. One teaspoon of dry mustard. Now we used, in one of the jars, we used ground mustard and it didn't settle out as well, I don't think. Something else we're gonna do, and we've got some tell cherry pepper. You don't have to use tell cherry. You can use any kind of black peppercorns. Now, if you wanna go crazy here, you could. Nikki doesn't like things real hot. This adds just a bit of heat. You don't even notice, really. You didn't notice in that pickle. You could go crazy if you want to. I know you could. You'd put pickles. them all in there, wouldn't you? But we're not gonna go crazy. Thank you, I appreciate You're that. Welcome, Thank you. I would not do that to you. So there's where we are. So now we're gonna let this cool down. I'm gonna go ahead and pack my pickles in here. And you want these, as many as you can get in here. So, got these little fellers. I'll help you hold them up. If you don't mind. You want to get as many pickles in there as you possibly can. You know what I've noticed too? The farmer's markets have better pickles. This was yes. from the farmer's market. They always have better pickles. <laughs> you got to pull one pickle out, I think. Yeah, I don't You're going to have to give up. Done. That's right. That, that other one was a little bit smaller. Was it smaller? That's right. There, that's plenty of pickles for you. How's that? Ta -da. Good. I don't know. I think I can get one more. Do you? I don't know. I give up. Okay, so we're going to let this cool down. Now, already it smells like beautiful, wonderful pickles. Yeah. That will last about three months right. in the refrigerator. Those are refrigerator pickles. Now, if you wanted to make them last longer, or if you wanted to hot bath them, yeah. or if you wanted to even pressure cook them, you can do that. If you want them to last Beer. a long time. But the thing is, they're not going to have the crunch. Right. You want that last pickle, don't you? I might cut it in half. Do you half. want to cut it? Let's cut it in half. All right. <laughs> Seems like it needs that little bit more. A little more pickle. You hate to waste. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Give me that other half. You think you can get it in there? Look at that. We're not going to get any juice now. That's beautiful. Now we're going to do the same thing with this jar. And we're going to put asparagus there. Same thing. Same deal. Now, the one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to put a little more red pepper flake because I like my asparagus. Very flavorful. I like it. And you want to eat it like alone. a little bit warm. Yeah. Do you want two of those or one? Let's do two of those. Two of them. Okay. Two pieces of garlic in there. Same deal on this. Peppercorns, mustard seed. There's my mustard seed. Ready for your asparagus? And let's see where this is at. Getting That's there. ready. Ready? That's ready. Do you want these two? Yep. Let's cut them just. Oh, right there? Yeah, we, we kind of make it go a little, yep. Yeah. I like it here. Yummy. This is going to go in here, as many as I can possibly fit. <laughs> Yummy. And again, this is nice and crispy. If you were to hot bath this, it will last you a couple months longer, but it's going to be as soggy as it can be. Because it'll be your snack for the week, though. You need it quick. Oh, this, this, I will, I will get rid of all this stuff. I know you will. In no time flat. All right. Want this up here? We're ready. Ready to pour it in? We're ready. All right. Oh, is this magic? One jar at a time. It's almost perfect. It is perfect. Wow. Look at that. Yay! Now we'll cram those down there just a little bit more so they absorb that. And if you have extra, that's good. You'd rather have extra than that's none That's exactly enough. right. So what have we got now? Future snacks. Look how pretty that looks. Those are beautiful. They're pretty. Now look at that. Those are fresh and beautiful and wonderful. Those go in the refrigerator. Now the problem is, it's supposed to be five days. Yeah. It's hard for me to keep my hands off of them. I ate that pickle just a little while ago and it was just fantastic. Right. It'll just get better than just it think just of it gets that way. Better. By the time five days have rolled around, you're gonna be wanting to eat. Lots these will be gone. They're not gonna make it fine. I'm gonna put these in the fridge. All right, now many, many times as a kid, I would get, I would go to the store and get the jardinera. <laughs> and I loved it so much. I would get the extra hot and I would make myself sick oh, I because I would eat so much of it. It was really, really hot. Yeah. So this isn't going to be as, as hot. It's going to be a little hot, a little <laughs> sweet. I promise I'm <laughs> not going to make that up. So we're going to start off with vinegar, two cups of vinegar. That's our wet mix and we'll tell you the spices here in a moment. One cup of water. You know what, let's do all the half 
a teaspoon stuff first. Okay. We're gonna go turmeric, which is very good for you, by the way. Half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. <laughs> I noticed it less. wasn't it wasn't heaping. I, I hope you were watching. I was, <laughs> I was hoping watching. you were watching me. Let's go less. a couple bay leaves. That's right. <laughs> go spoon them out there. <laughs> couple bay leaves. Okay. All right. Peppercorns. Let's go uh, ten. We're counting them out. We're just counting them out. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And a half a teaspoon of celery seed. That smells so good already. And fennel, we're gonna use a half of a tablespoon. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our cup of sugar in here. I'm starting to mix this up. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Just dissolve everything nicely. That's a half a tablespoon of salt. Half a tablespoon Close of salt. Yourself. Okay, now this is a whole different mix. It's got such a wonderful taste. It's an Italian dish. A lot of times you can use fennel. If you don't like fennel, don't use fennel. But if you look, just like I got it in a jar as a kid, I take the uh, carrots and I cut them in the, on the mandolin. I'm gonna get them all pretty. A little serrated yeah. edge to make them pretty. Now again, this is refrigerator mm -hmm. style. We're I not, like it. We're not gonna, if you hold the mandolin still for me. You gotta have the fancy carrots, huh? That's right. It's worth worth the risk. Be careful. So now we're gonna take. If if that was if that right there, if you notice what size that is. If that was a whole head, that'd be a pretty good size. This was right. actually half of a head that we had last night. Because they're night. so huge. So we're gonna take those and cut off the florets, I guess you could call them. So that has completely dissolved our salt and our sugar. We're gonna let that cool down. Again, we don't want to cook these vegetables. We want them to remain firm and remain crunchy. Remember, the vinegar and the salt and the sugar is its own preservative. And you only want this in the refrigerator for about three months. I'll eat a jar or two in a couple of weeks. Yes, you will. We have let this cool a little bit. You can let this cook just a tiny bit. Yeah. But again, if you want that crunch, remember, yes. The preservative is in the jar. That's right. And it goes in the refrigerator. So let's dump everything. The onions, the we carrots, take the Take your celery, little bay leaves out. Take our bay leaves out. There's something old fashioned about pickling and relishes. And so these are our peppers and our cauliflower and our carrots and our celery and our onions go in. So we're gonna stir that up just a little bit. Okay, now she's got a slotted spoon because we're gonna get as much vegetable matter in there as we can. Kind of split it up evenly. Equal amounts of peppers and so on and so forth. Ta-da! Ta-da. There's three jars of jardinera. Or Kentucky would say jardinera. This should be about perfect for three jars. And it looks like it's going to be. Look at that, beautiful. Now, Good job. the great thing about this is they're not gonna seal. They're going straight to the refrigerator. Two to three months, of course, they won't last that long. <laughs> because if you tasted it, you would understand what's going on here. All right, so we have spicy pickled asparagus. We have wonderful garlic dills. And we have jardinera. And it was so easy. You know what else we have? What? In the background? Dinner. Yes. <laughs> this was an appetizer. Are you starving? I am starving. I I'm can't starving wait. Too. I cannot Look wait. Look at this. We're so proud of what we've got it's here. Beautiful. All right, let's have dinner. Make it a couple in there. Do it. Oh, look at that. Well, the good thing about this in a crock pot, you can just leave it on warm and just let them sit, and we can just eat these till they're gone. Is that good? Or you want another one? You know, I want to put a little bit of tomatoes over top of right. it. All right. I wish you could smell. It What's looks going so on good. Here? Oh wow. <laughs> that is amazing. The sausage is delish. That Italian sausage. No. Oh, it's almost like you're cheating it. It can't be that good and that healthy. It's got so much flavor in it. And then the, with the cabbage, we are, we're eating healthy, aren't we? That is so good. Those flavors yes. just bounce out of that sausage. You know what? Uh, somebody out there might be asking me, they'd say something to the effect of, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. where might I find those recipes? And you would say to them, TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. We have so many recipes there, so many how to's, how mm -hmm. to build things, how to forage, how to identify certain things. We do have a Facebook page, but mm -hmm. it is extremely difficult to mm -hmm. get on there. How do you get on our Facebook page? You hit like. I know. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Only one rule, be kind. That's right, be kind. You know what? We're here for a short time. Let's mm -hmm. be nice to each other. It's very easy and it's contagious. Yes, it is. 
So, Ms. Farmer, we got all this stuff done. Look what we've got left to do. I know. But it's so worth it. Yes, it is. So, let's go ahead and talk about eating dinner. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and super good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yummy. Yum, Papa. Can you dig it? I can. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Emerson Farms Country Store. Something for every member of the family. Ephraim McDowell Medical Center in Danville, Kentucky. Gulf Coast Connection. Seafood straight from the Gulf to you. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky. Wilderness Road Hospitality, Stanford, Kentucky. Visit Frankfurt, Kentucky Spirited Capital City.